All right. Well, it looks like we've gotten everyone in. So welcome everyone to One Schoolhouse's Wednesday, What's New This Week webinar. I just want to give everybody a few reminders. I'm Sarah Hanawald, Assistant Head of School for Professional Development for One Schoolhouse. And I have with me today uh, two other Assistant Heads of School at One Schoolhouse, Liz Cates and Corinne Dedini, and we'll introduce our or they'll introduce themselves in just a minute, but I just wanted to give you a couple of reminders about what's going on at One Schoolhouse. Um, on our blog right now, we've got Building for Resilience, written by Liz, and I, it's a great read. I highly recommend it. Uh, I want to share next week's webinar, but next week the webinar will be on vacation. In fact, the next two weeks. So when you come back in January, we hope you'll join us for a happy new year from One Schoolhouse, where we talk about not what's new this week, but What's new this year? Um, and we have some upcoming PD that you may be interested in signing up for before you head out on winter break or maybe when you come back in January, but we're offering several of these um, courses and we'd love to have you join us. So I'm gonna stop sharing and bring everyone in. And while we're here, I just wanna remind everyone we are going to use the Q&A for questions for our speakers, and we'll use the chat to connect with one another and share resources there. So without further ado, I wanna welcome Liz, who has been here a couple of times recently, and Kareen, who has not been here in a little while. Would both of you just take a moment and introduce yourselves and share a little bit about your role here at One Schoolhouse? Um, Liz, sure. why don't you go first? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Liz Cates. I am the Assistant Head for School Partnerships at One Schoolhouse. Um, what that means is that I have the great good fortune to um, talk to fantastic people in schools all across the country. Um, I love my job because I really get to hear what's happening in schools and help them solve problems, um, which is my favorite part um, of working with One Schoolhouse since I joined the team a little over three years ago. Great. And Corinne, can you introduce yourself? been at this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Corrine. Um, I think I know many of you from uh, years working with One Schoolhouse, and I'm happy to be connecting with you today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I have been with One Schoolhouse for seven years, and I oversee teaching and learning. So I work primarily on the academic side of the house. But this year, um, under these unique circumstances, I've had a lot of opportunity to share our expertise and what we know about online and hybrid learning with many of you all who wound up being in the situation where you needed to build some skills pretty quickly. So um, I feel fortunate this year to have been able to share some of our expertise. And um, for as much as I believe in and love online learning, I'm looking forward to you all returning to normal. <laughs> so at this time of year, there are gifts flying. Um, from person to person and across the country. And so we are giving our schools a present that we hope they're excited about, which is a preview of our courses for the upcoming year. And it sounds so strange to say 2021, 20, 22, but that is what we are about to embark on. So Liz, what happens this time of year at One Schoolhouse? So what happens this time of year is something we started doing um, nine months ago, really, um, which is that as soon as we finished um, that as soon as we finish one academic year, we start looking ahead to the next. We start looking at where our enrollment numbers were in um, where our students were really thriving and looking for more. Um, we take a look at what growing college majors are across the country, um, at what new disciplines are going on, and also what's just going on in the world around us. Um, and once we sort of have our finger on that pulse, um, then we reach out to our consortium schools. And we ask them what their inter what courses um, would serve them well. So one of the things that's really different about what we do at One Schoolhouse is that we set the courses that we teach based on the needs of our consortium schools. Um, it's not that um, not that somebody comes and says, "I have a really great idea for a course on the history of the combustion engine." Um, we ask our schools, "Are you interested in combustion engines?" Um, that's not usually a major point of interest, um, it turns out for most of you. So we listen to our schools, we find out what their needs are. Um, sometimes we wanna know, we wanna 
ask a little bit about some questions that we have. Sometimes we're looking for information from all of you folks. And then we pull all of that together. Um, and then we start crafting um, the courses that we plan to offer for the next academic year. So that is a really thorough and impressive process. And one of the neat things about this role for me this year is I get to ask you guys these questions and learn even more about this organization that I've joined. So Corrine, what did you learn from schools this year? Well, the school survey and um, calls that come in and go out really teach us a lot about what's going, in, going on at our schools, but it's not always consensus. And so what was fun this year was that we heard a lot of intersections um, and things that schools need. And so the first thing that we heard was something that actually kind of took us back to when we started 11 years ago, which is that schools really need us to expand STEM offerings for them. Um, and so what we're hearing is kind of two different angles on that. One is that students want to explore their passions. They want to go deep in particular subjects. And maybe there's only a handful of students in every school who want to do that. But if we can offer that class, then um, we can put together an entire section of students who want to have an experience of a deep dive into an area of passion. And so a couple of examples of what you'll see next year is an advanced topics in chemistry course. And this is a course for students who are maybe thinking that they want to major in one of the physical sciences or they want to think about med school and they're looking for something deeper than what they got in their honors or chemistry class last year. So it'll focus on environmental chem, organic chemistry and biochemistry. Another example kind of in the same vein is an anatomy and kinesiology course. Um, kinesiology, as many of you know, is a major that has been rising in popularity over the last several years. Um, physical therapy, sports medicine, those types of things are um, really vibrant lifestyles for young people. And so they're attracted to studying that. So those are two examples of kind of the, the passion type courses. And then on the other side are students who wanna be able to just go, go broad. They wanna make sure that they have a really well-rounded high school educational experience so that a lot of doors are open to them when they get to college. And examples of courses that we'll be adding in these areas are AP Chemistry and AP Physics too. So more general courses that are at an advanced or higher level, um, but that are sometimes hard for schools to run because only a handful of students or families want them. Um, but these are courses that are still really essential for the schools to be able to meet their goals. That, those sound like really robust additions to the STEM programming, it's exciting. So Liz, what else, what other courses came out of those surveys? So um, Corrine, I'm gonna uh, piggyback on something Corrine said about consensus. So usually we send out this school survey and we look, we say, this is really interesting. People want really different things. Um, and that was not the case this fall. Um, so one of the court, one of the court- King, and can I just clarify? So it was not the case that they wanted really different things. There was some clarity. Yeah, exactly. Okay. There was. This year, more than we have ever seen before, there was consensus. And the place where that was most striking was around um, courses around Black identity and Latinx and Chicano identity. And, um, and it was so exciting to us to hear schools' enthusiasm for giving their students ways to explore identity, social justice, um, inequity, and, um, and inclusion in an academic context, as well as in terms of identity formation and community building. So we are really excited to be expanding, expanding what we think of as our identity thread of courses. Um, so for the past few years, we've offered a course on um, gender and sexual identity in the United States. We are thrilled to be adding Black identity in the United States and Latinx uh, Chicano uh, identity in the United States. Um, and we're doing those in our semester program, which is really exciting because um, some of you know, our fall semester courses are content-based. We go into topics that, and they're typically the kind of topics that are electives that students, as Karine said, feel really passionately about. Our second semester option, however, 
is deep project-based learning. And we give students one, they can choose from one of three pathways. So they can choose from a research pathway, a design pathway, or a activism pathway. And students in any of the, in, in any course can choose any one of those pathways. So the description that I like to think about is that for a student in abnormal psychology, they may choose to do a research review of the study of um, autism and environmental factors. In the design course, they might choose to prototype um, a range of clothing for students, um, I'm not part of students, for uh, children who have sensory processing disorder and autism. And in the activism seminar, they might put together a, uh, a buddy program that their school can partner with a local special needs program for high school students to mentor students on the autism spectrum. So wow. we're giving students the chance to not just go deep into the things they care about, but to really look at them in real world contexts. So just to reframe that a little bit, the students would all begin together in terms of the foundations in first semester of clarifying their understanding and building their knowledge base and then their action path could be activism, could be research, could be design. Yeah, it's really exciting. What a neat, neat opportunity. Kareen, when you're building the program, can you tell us a little bit more about the process that goes into, you know, something that results in an innovative course like that? Sure, Sarah. One of the things that's unique about One Schoolhouse is that from the beginning, our course catalog was built on the needs of our schools. So, so especially when we were smaller, you would look at our catalog and be like, is this really a school? Because this is a really strange collection of courses. Um, but that is all undergirded by one of our guiding principles in the academic program, which is growth and reflection. And so, so as we connect with our schools and we're constantly seeking to grow and reflect on both our curriculum and our pedagogy, we are always coming back to the curricular choices that deliver on our mission. And so our curriculum has to reflect our values. And the primary value here in choosing courses is how do we be a partner in innovation to our schools? And over time, you know, when, when we started and we're super tiny and nobody was in the online space yet, we really had to work at understanding and implementing the research, what little research there was about best practices for teaching and learning in the online space. And, and we worked really hard to marry that with what courses our schools were telling us they needed. And, you know, over the last decade, we've been able to develop a really robust pedagogy that is not only based on the research, but it's also based on our own evolving experience. And so um, I've been hearing from some of you lately about we've learned, we've had to learn what our best practices for teaching online. And in some ways, we're also all, this includes online schools, evaluating what need to become past practices. What are the things that we need to let go of when we go back to life as normal? And I think this is a taste for schools of the space that one schoolhouse has always lived in. So this, this curriculum that has grown into 57, am I right, Liz, courses for next year? Uh, I think it's actually 62. 62, I forgot, five. <laughs> this will be... This will be our biggest catalog ever, and it is still, back to that core, it is still a reflection of our school's needs, but it's had this really nice arc where we've been able to build out programming and improve upon pedagogy based not only on research and best practices, but also our own process of growth and reflection over time so that students have these really deep and robust learning experiences in their online course. The other thing, Sarah, that I think um, kind of ties together all that we're talking about is there's no better example of that growth for us than these interdisciplinary semester electives. And so the idea that in the fall, students can take this deep dive into a passion, a topic that they really want to learn more about that 
to their school community might be something no one else is interested in or might just not be something that can be offered. And then we, we have always had a pillar in our pedagogical program that if you're not able to apply what you're learning to the real world, it doesn't really matter. And so as we built out the semester program, instead of saying to teachers, to all of the fall teachers who were teaching these very specific and unique courses, okay, make sure that at least half the time each week is spent applying what they're learning to the real world. We decided, what if we take an entire semester? There's no better way to ensure that at least 50% of a value is happening than saying the entire semester is devoted to that. And we built these three interdisciplinary strands that um, students could experience in a more seminar style. So it's a lot of learner driven work. It's very interdisciplinary because they're pulling whatever the passion was they took in the fall into a different type of application for the spring. And the spring facilitators may or may not be experts in the exact topic that the student is choosing from the fall, but they are an expert in how to guide the students on the activism design or research path and process. So, um, so I feel like that program in particular really exemplifies the one school house value of evolving our curriculum and pedagogy in response to both what we're learning and the needs of our schools. I think you put that so well and I can add kind of a personal note having had a personal learner in the activism course who was very engaged and felt like it helped her solidify a lot of her thinking. And then she's a bit of a frustrated activist right now in some ways, because there's not a lot of opportunity for teenagers, particularly when their mother is saying, well, you don't have a license yet. And I don't know if I'm seeing enough masks. <laughs> so maybe you can't do that. So I think that was a really empowering experience for her. So there's a, a testimonial unsolicited there on that quote. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we're doing this year that's really um, sort of maybe newer to us or maybe more articulated than before are some of the pathways that the teachers are experiencing and the growth pathways that they might be exploring. Can you guys talk a little bit more about that and, and how that's helped evolve some of the courses? Sure, Sarah. And uh, I'm sorry I said you guys, would you too please say that? I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for modeling that. In fact, um, inclusion is one of the areas where we as a staff and a faculty are working to grow. So many of you are familiar with how One Schoolhouse does professional development for our teachers. Um, they come in and they get this immersion experience in our pedagogy. They are actually students in our learning management system taking a course on how to design for an online learning experience that is competency-based and has a personalized elements so that students can drive their own learning as they move through the course. And once the teachers have gone through that initial, initial immersion experience and designed their first course for us, then every year they continue to have ongoing coaching and professional growth. And many of you have heard from or heard us brag about our amazing instructional designer, Lene Boudreau. Lene is a pedagogical generalist. Her own academic background is broad. The types of courses that she's taught, both for one schoolhouse and in face-to-face -face schools prior to coming to work for us is very broad. So she has deep experience across a lot of disciplines. But what we wanted to offer our teachers this year in alignment with an initiative that One Schoolhouse is taking is an opportunity to grow around what we're calling inclusive innovation. And so how do we build programming that allows our students to have a more inclusive experience within our courses and also makes our school as a whole more inclusive to a range of learners and identities. And you heard Liz talk a few minutes ago about how that's showing up in our curriculum and also matching a need that we're seeing from our schools. And there's no secret that we're at an inflection point as a society where talking about and educating children on the importance of being global citizens and being activism activists and standing up for what is right 
is, um, is part of what it means to be a member of society right now. And so being able to articulate those values and to move forward in a healthy way is something that we are all responsible for as we grow strong kids. So what's fun in our own program right now is that one of our first steps in this initiative is to offer our teachers a pathway in this work. And so our teachers every year have three pathway choices for their own professional growth over the course of the year. And we have hired a second instructional designer, Tracy York. And Tracy is an expert on inclusive innovation and disruption. And so she has come into our staff and she is getting to know us. She is examining our courses closely. She is building really deep relationships with our faculty. And one of the pathways that she is offering to faculty this year is around how to build for a more inclusive experience. And the two particular elements of that are DEIB, which is obviously front and center for a lot of schools right now already. And so you know what I mean when I'm saying that. But the other element that's really important to us here at One Schoolhouse is UDL, Universal De Design for Learning. And that's a little bit more unique to the online learning experience. It's true across the board. Independent school teachers tend to not have a real strong background in that because they make up for it with the one-on-one -on -one relationships with students. So if a student has a particular learning difference or need that isn't maybe as mainstream as some of their other students, they make up for that by just meeting the student where they are and giving them the individualized attention. But there are also broader practices, particularly in the online space, that can be implemented so that the experience online is more universally acceptable and is more accessible to a wider range of learners. So, um, so we're doing some really deep work internally on this, and I know that Sarah will be excited to be able to share more about our growing expertise in both of these areas as um, 2021 rolls on. But I um, just want you to know that that's happening internally for us right now. You'll see the results in our courses. Um, if any of our faculty members work at your schools, I'm sure you'll hear them talking about ways that they're growing and learning. That's great. And I wanna remind everybody that if you've got a question, please put it in the Q&A. And, um, and if you want to ask it anonymously, you can send it to just the panelists as well. Liz, is there anything that you wanted to add on that front before we go on? Sure. So, um, you know, we've uh, January is when we get to roll out all of our new courses for the upcoming academic year and for summer 2021. Um, but it is also sometimes where we get to roll out some new projects of our own. Um, so for those of you, we um, who are work uh, with us as advisors, we are so, so excited that we are going to be rolling. <laughs> Karina's laughing because I've been like champing at the bit to get this project going um, or to get it to all of you more accurately. Uh, we are going to be rolling out a new portal for schools, which means that our advisors now are going to be able to log into our system to register directly, to um, view student uh, grades, to view uh, the uh, report cards and transcripts, to see historical data. So if you've got a student who took a course two years ago and is applying to college this year, they're gonna have access to that there. So we're really excited that in this first phase, we're gonna be making the job of the advisor a lot easier. What that means um, in the future, though, is that what we're hoping we'll be able to do is to give schools access to seeing a little bit more about how we use analytics and data, too. So that's our phase, our phase two piece that you won't see for a while, but this portal is the first step um, in, helping, uh, in, in helping us work more cohesively with schools. You're not going to be able to, to do anything different, but you're going to be able to do everything much more easily. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, and then what it means about our capability to be able to share with you how we use um, data and how we use our systems to help support students. I, I love that, first of all, I'm a tech lover. So in general, we know that about me. It's come out before. But I love that I see this reflection in the course offering with the course on artificial intelligence and then when schoolhouse is using artificial intelligence. 
And then our efforts to really thinking about how we imbue this. Like I know that that artificial intelligence course will include some aspects of, you know, how do we make sure that AI is being built in a way that's equitable, that doesn't just reflect the worst things about our society that, I mean, if you go on Twitter nowadays, you will see a lot of AI is, is racist um, themes and posts that are absolutely accurate. We've got a couple of questions coming in. So one of them is from someone who must be at one of our schools who said, if I didn't bring up a course that I'm hoping you'll teach, is it too late? Uh, so the answer is give us a call. Um, so some sometimes um, when we, we get a sort of late in the game request from a school that echoes some of the trends that we were hearing when we surveyed um, schools. So an example for that is that for many years, we heard some interest um, in our schools about a French sequence. Um, and then in uh, March, um, two years ago, we got a call from one of our consortium schools who said, we, we just can't hire, we can't find a French teacher who meets our standards. We don't wanna lose this program. Would you, it be, would you be interested in building out a full sequence? And because that aligned, that aligned to what we had been hearing. And also we, we knew that we were going to be able to have the, we did some more research with our schools and we talked to a number of them. We realized that now we have the numbers. And so we added a French sequence to our course catalog in March. So the answer is that sometimes we are able to do that. So if there's a specific course that, that you're looking at right now and wondering, maybe it's about space, maybe it's about staffing, maybe it's about numbers and finances, and you're wondering if an online option might be available, give me a call. Um, we, and, and even, we'll see if we can help you solve it. And if not, we'll help you troubleshoot it too. So the answer is maybe, maybe. might be the last piece of the puzzle and it's the perfect time to call. So please do. So we've got another question for Corrine and this one says, please keep this anonymous. Um, if someone's interested in teaching for one schoolhouse, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I would love to tell you more about that. Um, so as you know, one, most one school has teachers work full time in one of our face-to-face -face consortium schools, but that is not a requirement. Um, and then they teach one class for us. And I would say the most common path is a teacher who has done the teaching and coaching model for a long time and now driving that bus late at night, maybe it's time for some other secondary augmentation. And so they're thinking about how they wanna grow professionally and then we are the perfect match. And that's really the secret. Um, teachers who work with us say that this is the best professional development they've ever done. And so, you have to really want to grow professionally. You have to be passionate about learning about and learning how to build for a competency-based personalized learning experience in the online space. Um, that's not the same as I don't get to teach AP chemistry at my face-to-face -face school and I love that course, so I wanna teach it online. Um, what's different is that we put our pedagogy and our learners first. And then the course curriculum falls in line with that. And so I think that's a really important distinguishing factor for people who wanna teach with us. I look for pedagogical innovators and I look for content experts. I wanna know that you know your stuff. I'm not gonna hire you to teach chemistry if you have never taught chemistry before probably. But what I'm really looking for when we go through the interview process is, are you interested in growing in the ways that one schoolhouse is interested in growing and in the areas where we are experts? Because we want you to bring what you learn back to your school. We want the students who you teach for one schoolhouse to have a wonderful learning experience, but we also want your kids back in your face-to-face -face classroom to really benefit from what you've learned through your work with one schoolhouse. So um, our call for teachers is open. You will find it under employment opportunities at the bottom of our website. And it will remain open through the end of January. We will probably be hiring about 10 more teachers next year because of the way our program is growing. Um, and sometimes we hire teachers where there's a brand new course that needs to be built. Um, and sometimes we hire teachers 
to be backup teachers because we have an already existing course that we anticipate needing to offer a second section of the following year. And so some teachers who apply into our programming will be joining a team and will be working collaboratively with other teachers to refresh an existing course for next year. And some teachers who join our team will be learning to design a course from scratch and then build it over the course of the summer. Corinne, can I add one more thing there that we look for with our teachers, which is that we look for great communicators. Um, and, and one of the things that, um, that for me, I am so proud about working with One Schoolhouse is how teachers come to us um, because they wanna teach online, but they want to have connections with their students when they teach. And so one of the thing, pieces, important pieces of our hiring process is actually helping people become uh, effective online communicators. And that has a lot in common with how we communicate in face-to-face -face schools. Um, but there's also other pieces and, and making sure um, that uh, we wanna hire folks whose warmth and enthusiasm and, um, and empathy comes through um, in their online presence. Um, and so the teachers who work with us really are excited about getting to work with students in a different way. Um, and those connections and those relationships are key to what makes our faculty so fantastic. That's the truth, Liz. <laughs> so that, I can't think of a better closing statement. So thank you both so much. And thank you everyone out there and have a happy holidays and a happy new year. And we will see you in 2021. Bye. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. <laughs>